statistics and excel coin flip statistics example in excel get ready taking a deep breath holding it in for 10 seconds looking forward to a smooth soothing excel first a word from our sponsor yeah uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like this cpa thinking cap for example cpa thinking cap you see what we did with like with the letters and this cpa thinking cap is not just for cpas either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple cpa thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people all of whom directly profit from the sale of these cpa thinking caps wearing this cpa thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey increases accounting productivity tenfold yeah at least yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster it's kind of like how in like the matrix when neo learns kung fu or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying so get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash if you would like a commercial free experience consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com here we are in excel if you don't have access to this workbook that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet so you can just open a blank worksheet but if you do have access to this workbook three tabs down below example practice a blank example in essence answer key practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can focus in on the heart of the practice problem blank tab being a blank so we can practice formatting the cells in excel as we work through the practice problem let's go to the first tab to get an idea of where we will be going the scenario being we're imagining we have a coin we want to test whether or not the coin is fair. In other words, it sh if it was a fair coin, we would expect it to have an even chance to be landing on heads or tails. If we were to flip the coin, if it's unfair, then we're going to think that the chances are more likely that it lands on either heads or tails. How do we test whether or not the coin is fair? Well, typically we'll run some samples of it. We'll run some trials and we'll take a look at the results of the trials. Now, as we do this, we wanna get an idea of the statistics involved and the testing involved, and also the tools that we can use in Excel to, form, to, to simulate these tests so that we can practice with those tools in Excel as well. So let's go to the first tab over here and I'm gonna format the entire worksheet and I'm, I'm gonna do that by selecting the triangle up top or you can say Control A, right click and format the worksheet as we do every time in Excel. Basically, we're gonna to go to the currency tab and bracketed negative numbers bracketed and red, no dollar sign. I don't think I need the decimals because of the type of problem that we are working in. So I will remove the decimals. Then I'm gonna zoom in a bit, holding control and scrolling in. So I'm currently at 220, I'm at 235 now. And so now what we wanna do instead of actually flipping the coin multiple times is say, how can I simulate that process in Excel? Now, if we had an even flip, a 50-50, then we have the, we want a, a, a random outcome between two variables. So I can use my random uh, random function in order to do that. So let's first think about that. Let's let's think about how we can get a, a, a random function between one and two. Now remember when you're flipping a coin, the in theory you can say, well, if the coin was fair and I was to flip it for the entire population being infinity, infinity times, then you would think I'd get an even break between 50-50 heads and tails. So when we actually do a sample, when we test it, what we're really, you can think of that as a similar thing as taking a sample from the entire population. In this case, the entire population being infinity flips, a theoretical concept. 
and we're testing it with a, a finite number of flips and then seeing how close we get to what we would think would be the appropriate response given the whole population would be 50 50 in infinite flips like that's one way you can kind of think of it with our sampling concepts so we need something that's going to come out if it was a fair coin between uh even uh random between one and two right so if we say i'm going to have my random results random results between one and two i can say this equals a rand a rand function between and then i'm just going to say the bottom number is one and the top number is two so one comma two there's our random function this will give us random numbers between one and two now it doesn't give us a decimal so if i was to say maybe you might think that it's going to give us like point something right no it's going to give us the whole number of one or two so that basically simulates an even coin if i was to flip an even coin so if i then uh copy that down we can then get and, and by the way i'm working here in, in row six so i'm going to actually delete some of the rows above it because i thought i was in row one to start with i'm going to put my cursor on the one drag down to row five right click on the selected area and delete that stuff and then i'll also make this bold so both a full sheet font group and make it bold so then if i'm on number one i'm starting at number two if i was to copy this down like a hundred times let's say we copied it down you know a hundred times then we would have a, a sample in essence of a hundred flips right and so now we've got random amounts of one and two notice that every time i click on them they randomly shuffle uh again let's go ahead and put some uh a table in here so i'm going to say format or i'm sorry insert table there's our table and so if we want to make this a little bit more formal let, let's assign what one and two means now so i could then say let's make b a little bit smaller i don't want to put anything right next to the table i, I need that space we've got to keep the table separate the table needs to be separate than the other stuff and so i'm going to say the heads uh uh or a one represents heads right so one represents heads and tails is going to be the two the two is tails so let's go ahead so we've assigned our terms and go to the home tab font group i'm going to make this blue and bordered i go to the more colors down here typically if i don't have the blue yet and pick up that blue it's the one i want and then font group and put some borders around it all right so then what i'd like to do instead of having this shuffling around all the time i can then copy my results i'm going to copy this whole tab and then paste it special without the formulas paste it with with just the just the numbers one two three so i'm going to copy put my cursor on a column right click the cells copy them and i'm going to put them over here somewhere in like f i'm going to paste them one two three because i don't want the formulas there anymore i just want the results of that shuffled those shuffled numbers so i'm going to put one two three so there we have it let's make another oh, hold on a second it didn't paste one two three i'm going to paste it one two three okay and then i'm going to make a skinny e column skinny e and then if i was to look at my results here i would i could then do a fancy little formula if i wanted to to basically say whether it's heads or tails so here's the outcome i know that uh, one is heads and two is tails but i could try to say how can i convert my random ones and twos to heads and tails we'll practice logic functions in excel basically asking excel to give us a result of heads if this number happens to be a one if this number is not a one then we'll say give us tails that's really all we need to do because there's only two variables heads or tails so we're going to say if it's a heads give us heads if it's not heads give us tails so i'm going to put my cursor over here we're going to say equals if there's our logic function we can double click on the if or add the brackets shift nine here's our logic box so here's our arguments down here we're on the logic test being the first argument 
where we're going to say that we want if this number is equal to the number one in our box over here then when i say then i put a comma if that test is true what do you want us to do that's the next value if it's true we want you to put a heads next to it if it's true and then comma if it's false what if it's not true what do you want us to do we want you to put a tails so once again first test if this number equals one next part we want you to to then put a heads in it next part if it's not equal to one put a tails in it and if i hit enter it puts a tails now I'd like to copy that down. I'm gonna double click on it. I can't copy it down as if because, because these cells will shift down. I want this cell to shift down. I don't want these cells to shift down. So anything that's outside of the current uh, range I'm working in, I need to tell Excel, don't shift it down. So for, for example, this one's in uh, D1. So I'll put my cursor in D1. Now the way you do this is one way is you could just select F4 on the keyboard it puts a dollar sign before the D and a dollar sign before the one. Those are the two variables locating our cell on the two dimensional screen, right? We've got, we've got D one. So it's saying that dollar signs have nothing to do with dollars. It's just telling Excel when I pull this down, don't change the D or the one, keep the cell exactly the way it is. That's called an absolute reference. And you only need a mixed reference, by the way, but uh, an absolute will work here. So I'm going to use that. And then over here, we've got the tail, uh, the, the, the tails. So that's on C1. So same thing here. I'm going to put my cursor in there. F4 dollar sign before the C and the one and C2. Also, uh, we don't want it to move F4. So now these are all absolute cell references, except for this one, F2, because I do want that one to move down. So let's hit enter. I'll show you what I mean. I put my cursor on this, put my cursor on the fill handle. Let's drag it down to the number one, where it should show us the heads. If I double click on it, there's the references. Didn't change that cell, didn't change that cell, didn't change that cell, did change this cell, because now we moved that down to four, whereas here it was at a number two. Then if I just put my cursor on this one and double click it, it'll go all the way, it'll go all the way down. So there we've, we've got it all the way down and we could say these are our results for our first test. I could make it into a table if I want now, go into the insert tab, tables and insert a table and say I want to uh, add the table. And then we could look at our results and we could look at them uh, this way. You know, I could show the results from Z to A and put all my heads and all my tails, which might give me an idea. I can count where the middle point is. And then of course, what we would want to do is get the percentage that's gonna be heads versus the percentage that's going to be tails. So let's make a skinny H over here. And, and so this is basically our sample that we took now. We took a sample of the population, which in theory is infinite number of flips, which we know in theory, if you did an infinite number of flips would come out 50-50, but we just did a sample of 100. So now we can count the heads and count the tails. So let's say we've got heads, uh, tails, and We'll, we'll do a count function here. So I could, I could say, I could do it this way. We were going to say equals count if, count if brackets, we only need one condition. So I'm going to say count if, I'm going to pick up the range. Now I could do either range doing this with numbers or doing this with, uh, with uh, the, the non-numerical value. So let's just do the heads here. So I'm going to say count them uh, if that uh, range comma, has a criteria, what's the criteria? That it's just simply going to be heads. So count them if they are heads. And then enter, so there's 52. Now I know if there's 52 out of 100, I could say 100 minus 52, or it would be better for me to give me a double check to do the same thing here, equals count if brackets, the range. So there's the range, comma, the criteria, if it's a tails and then closing that up and enter and then i'll pick up the total and the total equals the sum of these two so there we have it and i only have 99 so notice i don't exactly have a hundred apparently i didn't 
counted out properly because I stopped at 100. I missed that first sell. So there's only out of 99. Now, actually, I think that's actually good because notice if it was out of 100, we could see here that that would be representing 52% versus 49%. But the fact that we always use round numbers in these practice problems lead can kind of lead to confusion because what we're really doing uh, is saying I'm taking the 52 heads out of the total number of flips, which there was only 99 in this case. So that means to get a percent, let's put an underline here, font group and underline. I can get a percent by taking equals the heads divided by the total, which is not 100, but only 99. So it's not 52%. Uh, we've got a number one. I need to make that to a percent. Home tab numbers. I'm going to make it a percent. Add a couple decimals just to make it a little bit more exact. So it's real. So, it, so it's 52, uh, uh, 53, right? So, and this is going to be equal to 49 divided by 100. Let's, and then this one is simply going to be equal to this divided by itself or 100%. Or in other words, I can sum up these, which will be 100. And then let's format this one. I'm going to use the format painter this time to format these two the exact same formatting. Home tab, clipboard, format painter, and then paint brushy these two and so it's the same formatting i'll underline it here home tab uh uh font and underline so we can see that it didn't come out exactly even though i did a pretty fair amount of flips 100 or 99 <laughs> flips but it's still uh 52 heads and tails 47 so if i was to judge this i can't i can't really say well it's unfair on heads side based on this result because you know, statistically speaking, it's quite possible that I flip it 100 times and that's pretty close to 50-50, right? So I, I'm still going to assume the null assumption that the coin is innocent. It's not fair. I mean, it is fair unless I get a preponderance of evidence that's going to prove to me otherwise. And so that's kind of the general idea. Let's go to the home tab, font group, put some brackets and make this one blue. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to try to make all these skinnies the same skinny size. I put my cursor on B. E, I'm holding down control E, holding control H, and then I'm going to make them the same skinny size so they're kind of uniform. And then so so now let's copy this number H. I'm going to go to the home tab, clipboard and and format paint the skinny and then skinnyize the L uh, the L over here. So now let's just do another test just to play with our numbers here. And let's say that we did uh, like like 15 of, of the one to 15 flips. And let's say that we did a sample of just one, one flip up to 15 flips and see you know, what, the, you know, what the differences are or two flips up to 15 flips. So let's say we say the number, number of flips is gonna be one and then two. And let's bring it up to 15. I'm going to put my cursor on this one and bring it up to uh, 15. And so then I'll center this one. And then let's just add our test. So this is going to be test, uh, test one. And then I'll put test two and so on up top. And then I'm just going to use my random my random between one and two again. So random or equals rand, uh, rand between, double click the between, one comma two. So one's head and two is tails is what, what we're standing, what it stands for again. So I'm just gonna hit enter. And so I get, I'm gonna put my cursor on that one and fill handle it down. So on the first test, I'm gonna say we flip it just uh, two uh, times. And then I'm going to put my cursor here and copy it to the right. And then I'm going to copy this one down. So I'm going to imagine we flipped it three times this time. And then I'm going to and notice all of those came out to one on this one random test. So 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 with three flips, that's quite, you know, that's quite possible. If I've copied it over again and then I uh, pull these down, we're going to imagine we flip it four times. And then I'm going to copy these to the right and then pull, oh, hold on a sec, and then pull these down. We're going to flip it five times, copy these to the right and flip it 
uh, six times, copy these to the right, imagine that we flip it seven times, copy these to the right, I'm going to pull this over a bit, imagine that we flip it eight times, copy these to the right, and then imagine that we flip it nine times, and then copy these to the right, and imagine that we flip it 10 times. I'll do it this way so I can copy it to the right easy. 10 times, copy to the right, and then we're going to imagine that we flip it 11 times, copy to the right, imagine that we flip it 12 times, copy to the right, imagine we flip it 13 times, copy to the right two more times and say that we're going to flip it 14 times and then copy to the right one more time and then we have to stop these good times of copying to the right and say that we flip it 15 times so there's our there's our random generation tests going from one i'm going to put my cursor on these two and drag it to the right and it should be able to to pick up the test numbers going from test 1 to 14. I'm going to select all of these, make that into a border by going to the Home tab, Font Group, and I'll make it black and white, which is typically what I do with the borders, and let's center it. And then I'm going to go back to the, to the, to the left, and I'm going to select all of my information here and put my blue, blue, and borders around it. Now this is just my test range. So what I'd like to do is just copy this whole thing and then I'm just gonna paste it one, two, three so that this thing will reshuffle anytime I wanna kind of reshuffle it. I can go in here and, and reshuffle everything and uh, then it'll, and then I can come and copy it again. So let's go ahead and copy this thing. I'm gonna copy the whole thing and then Go to the to the left and I'm gonna paste it one, two, three, just the values. Now I don't want the formulas, but I also want the formatting. So I could right click and paste the formatting. So I pasted the values and the formatting, but not the formulas. So I get this mimicking of the table, which now gives us our results, right? And I can go down here and say, okay, well, let's take a look at the heads. So I'm going to use my count if function again. So I'm going to say equals count if brackets. And then I'm going to take the range here down to here. And then comma. And I'm going to say count if it's uh, if uh, there's the range and the criteria if it's a one. So count it if it's a one. And then brackets enter. There are zero this time that is a that is a one. Notice with these first two tests, we've got two tests that came out completely tails, right? Which is could happen because we only flipped it a few times. And then if I copy this to the right, now I've got one and two, so I'm going to copy this all the way to the right. And so there we have it. And then we're going to say tails. So I could do the same thing. Count if brackets i'm picking up the entire range because i want to be able to copy it across i'm not just going to pick up those two because i want to copy it across count if comma it's a number two and then close it up and so there it is and here's the total then which is the sum of these two which means we only ran two tests this time so I can underline this and then I can say these are my percent heads versus the percent tails. So the percent heads would be equal to zero over two, zero, and the percent tails would be two over two. Uh, hold on a sec, equals two over two, and then the percent total which is going to be equal to the sum of these two percents. So I'm going to make all of these percents, home tab, uh, 
numbers percentifying them. So there's our percents. And I could put an underline here. So there we have it. In our first flip, we had zero heads, two tails, and so total tails. And so we've got 0% uh, heads and 100% tails. So let's copy that across, putting my cursor on the and copying across. And you can see, of course, the idea would be that if we have more flips, then you would think we would get closer to the to a better result. So I'm going to go to the to the home tab font group and make this blue this time for my totals blue and white. Let's put, let's put some borders around it too for the fun of it. We'll put some borders around it. So the idea here being that with two flips is probably not going to be enough with an infinite number of flips right of the population uh and the, and so we could come up with some skewed results of you know here's two two that all three hit tails here which is kind of unusual and then here we've got uh the tails are just doing quite well we've got 25 uh uh percent tails 75 head because one out of four versus three out of four five flips so now we have two tails, three. So that one looks at least a little bit more accurate. Notice this one we flipped, all heads came up this time, which is kind of un unusual, even though we flipped it six times, right? So that's kind of weird. And then you got four and three. This one actually came out exactly 50-50. And you would expect that if you get more flips, you would get closer uh, on average. However, not it's not always going to be closer than, than like this one we flipped it uh, less amount of times. 14 versus 15 and the 14 came out to what we would think is actual population 15 is off so then if you if you use a random generating tool like this you can then go in here and basically reshuffle everything right i can go in here and say let's do a reshuffle reshuffle make sure that we get every column on the reshuffle it might be better to put a table in here to make sure everything is shuffling Let's actually do that. Let's insert a table, make it into a table. And then when I reshuffle each column, everything should shuffle up. And then hopefully that all shuffled up. And then we could take, you know, all of our numbers that were randomly generated, hopefully copy them and paste them into our table over here, but paste them formats only one, two, three. And so now we've got a different set of numbers. Now we're on two that came up heads. And then now we've got two, two and three. So there's just a, a nice tool to be able to kind of simulate uh, our, our results with the random with the randomness. So I'm going to make this a little bit thinner. And we'll stop it here and continue on with some more testing next time.